Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look, not much to see on that box. This video is a, to bring you a closer look at the CCL. This is their part number D900 combination lock for cabinet doors for metal applications. So this is what the lock looks like when it comes out of the box. What else is in the box is some, what looks like, just packing material it's anything but packing material <laughs> it's it's the it is the installation instructions okay installation instructions and we're going to go over it and this resetting of unknown combination i sincerely hope that you never need to look at this document um <clears throat> what i mean to say is i have so this i don't know but this must be the combination chamber chamber from a Unican or a Simplex Unican, a Simplex lock, a mechanical push button lock. Now I don't know that it's the combination chamber, but if it's not, then there are two people who make something that look identical. And I have <clears throat> um, serviced those combination chambers. I have recovered lost combinations, and then I have performed absolute thoracic surgery on them when recovering the lost combination is not working. And I've studied the mechanism in terms of how it works and figured out how it had to be in order to fix it. I was able to fix it, but you know, you're an hour in by that time and you just want the thing to work. So <clears throat> we're gonna touch on this document. Um, <clears throat> the only thing that I can tell you about, and we're gonna go to the nasty part first, I guess, is that these mechanical combination chambers are ridiculously brilliant feats of <clears throat> mental engineering. Whoever thought this up is like so many people, you know, in our door hardware industry. If you were to look up, you know, look up a patent on a, well, look up Linus Yale's patent from 1861, patenting the pin tumbler cylinder that all of us use every day, well over 150 years later. He didn't invent the idea, the Egyptians did. Okay, let's talk about the Egyptians. Anyway, were these tremendous feats of mechanical insight, these mental uh, champions in this combination chamber is outrageously glorious in its complexity and its simplicity. Um, Hobbes, A.C. Hobbes, who was like the Han Solo of pre-Civil War lock technology, basically said the only way the lock is good is if it works and it's beautiful and it's simple. You know, Frank Lloyd Wright basically 100 years before Frank Lloyd Wright, um, or, well, 50 years anyway. It has to be simple in its design, and, and this combination chamber is most certainly that but you don't want to have to get to know it on an intimate level because it will be an investment in time. You will be, I throw my hands up. I need someone to fix this, fix this, send me a new one. Um, and it's just best that when you get a lock that features a mechanical combination like this D900 from CCL or any other lock, just read the instructions first. Do exactly what it says. Don't do anything, don't touch anything until you've done that and probably done it twice because the act of doing something out of sequence has in my experience put me down a path of trying to figure out what did I just do because it doesn't work right now how do I undo that um, so just read the installation instructions first and we're going to do that before we move any any further and those installation instructions are going to be on our screen here in a moment but just quick visually it has this cardboard shim in here to keep everything nice looking beautiful that's acting as what would ultimately be the door okay so you'll end up when you install this and when we get to the extended description we'll we'll talk about that this has a relatively nice just um the finish it's pop it's probably just aluminum with an anodized finish on it um a simple vertical five push button arrangement Three settings, lock, unlock, and then clear. Okay. Pretty simple and straightforward. Overall height of the faceplate. 
about five and three quarter overall width of that faceplate. Looks like it's about an inch and a sixteenth or so. Nice beveled edge. That's where that combination chamber resides back here. I have been working on these and I have just felt the sweat drip from my forehead. Um, because you know what? I only do it once every three years and I forgot everything that I did three years ago. So it's learning it over and over. But nonetheless, it does stick with you. The, the Basically the operation is pulling up this tail piece is how this is going to work. So this is going to connect to the rest of your <clears throat> uh, cabinet door structure. And this is just really the business end. Okay. There's a red feature on top of that for a reason. Just don't get curious about it, please. <laughs> and we're going to operate that lock um, real quick. So before we get to the installation instructions, we're just going to clear it, rotating it to clear. Then we're going to enter the combination. Then we're going to rotate it to unlock. I'm going to rotate it clockwise, but I'm going to show you down here as it pulls that up and you put it back to lock and it puts it back in its original position. And that's just simply a quick demonstration in terms of how this item actually works. So uh, I don't know if the installation instructions has a template or you know dimensional properties of about how to go about installing it, but I'm quite convinced it's going to be just a matter of removing the faceplate and then drilling a couple of holes to then put the lock from the back side, the faceplate from the front, obviously some additional function holes are going to be required. And that piece of cardboard might actually be a full-size template um, and not just a shim. So let's see what the installation instructions. This is clearly the first time I've seen this entire lock uh, in the sense of not having installed it in the past. But, you know, there's just not, there's just not, you know, to, to, there's not a lot of uh, technicality to certain pieces of hardware. So let's move to the screen view where we can take a look at the installation instructions. So here is the item that we are working on and looking at in the site. Combination push button lock. Easily retrofit existing locks of similar design and feature resettable combinations with easy to use instructions. For sheet metal doors, 75 thousandths to 105 thousandths. So just heavy on a sixteenth and just light on an eighth of an inch. So about the thickness of a residential hinge is what is going to work right inside of there. Latex free for hospital, medical center, and nursing care facilities. Full templates for new installations. Mechanical, no batteries needed. And they say that that faceplate is satin chrome. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I don't know what the faceplate's meant. Well, actually, I'm going to go with aluminum because it's, comp it's not magnetic whatsoever. So there's a cut sheet here, and let's dive into that initially. Okay, cut sheet from the manufacturer, and its variations can be seen here. So what you get here is a, is a 901 version, as well as the 900. So the 900 is for a metal door, or a, a you know, a, 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 a steel filing cabinet sort of application. Then you can put these onto wood doors as well. So typical three quarter inch drawer or cabinet fronts, you'd be able to do the 901 in a satin chrome or a satin brass. Notes for carded items, use K and just a couple of uh, explanations here in terms of finishes. Available for wood or metal, easily retrofit existing locks of similar design and feature resettable combinations with easy to use instructions Full templates, mechanical, no batteries, and then latex free. Now, let's take a closer look at the installation instructions. Okay, so <clears throat> to the installation instructions we go. So first and foremost, what's important to know is that the lock, as soon as you receive it, already has a combination that operates this lock. And what's important to know about that as well is that every single person who gets one of these locks from the factory initially has the same combination. So you're definitely going to, I would think, want to change that. So with the lock in your hand, the combination is one, three, then five. Push one, then push three, then push five. Always turn the knob counterclockwise to clear before entering the combination. If any buttons have been previously pushed, this clears and reactivates the buttons. 
And that very first paragraph is what I mean by reading the instructions first, because if you were ready to go, the factory is set with a combination one, three, and five. So what's the first thing you're going to do? Hit one, three, and five, and then try to unlock. That's probably not going to work. So let's demonstrate one, three, and five, but first clearing the combination and then entering the combination. Let's switch back to the camera view. And again, I'm usually very guilty about just jumping in first. So we know that the code is 135. Every one of these is 135. Simply rotate it to clear first. Okay. So as I hold this up to my microphone and I clear it, all you're hearing is the knob bottoming out. If I push a couple of buttons, now we'll listen to it clear. Click, click. There are geared wheels with gates in the construction of the combination chamber, which is what you are hearing finding the zero position, okay? It's not the zero position. What's really cool about this is those five wheel packs, those geared wheel packs that have a gate, and a gate is basically a notch for something that's called the fence to enter. When the wheel is not turned correctly, the fence can't enter. But when the wheel's turned correctly, the fence can enter. And the gate and fence concept go back millennia. It's the it is the it's a fundamental concept in how locks work and has been forever um, so what happens is those wheels can be set in lots I'm sorry to to segue into on you know this discussion of how the combination chamber works but I happen to know um, those geared wheels uh, can be set in lots of different positions when you enter the combination you will enter it's just amazing. The first button you enter is going to be a reference to the wheel that's furthest away, that its gate is furthest away, okay? Because it works like a safe lock. When you are turning the dial and turning the dial and turning the dial, you go three times to clear it. All of your wheels are set. When you turn that first wheel, you're actually turning the combination plate furthest away from where you want to end up. So that first combination is actually the third wheel. Because then when you go back the other way, that, that first wheel you moved now moves to move the second wheel. So what happens is in this chamber, when you hit that one, that's actually the gate that's furthest away. It'll if this is the one this is the one gear wheel, here's our fence. When you hit the one it goes click. When you hit the three it goes click. When you hit the five it goes click. Okay, and it stands to serve that the second wheel pack and the third wheel pack are already one interval closer to the gate. Okay, so it's really brilliant. The problem that I had where I screwed it up, and I don't know how I did, is I had those wheels completely out of any sort of sequence so that any code that I entered, I couldn't get them all lined back where the gates and the fence would align. So I literally had to teach myself how that process worked the first button moves the furthest one one click closer the second button moves the first button and the second but not button the geared wheels with gates moves that moves both of them one click closer the third combination now moves the first second and third all one click closer and the key is to get all of the gates aligned so the fence can enter which is what allows the lock to move okay something like that so clear is first, and, and you heard how the clicking sounded. Just press one, three, five. What I've just done is moved all those wheel packs. I'm going to turn it to unlock. I'm going to turn it towards the unlock position. And you can't see it, but this is going to go up. Unlock. Hold it up. Turn it back to lock. Remember where that is. Turn it back to lock. And there it goes back down. So that's that's just how the combination works. You're obviously going to want to change that combination um, because everyone else with this lock has one three five. 
Um, and interestingly enough, the Simplex Unican, the uh, L1000 series, the L L1000 series, um, all of those come out 2, 4, and 3. You hit 2 and 4 at the same time, and then 3. I imagine that you can have simultaneous buttons on this as well. Every one of those comes out from the factory 2, 4, and 3. So, um, not a secret, it's in, their, it's in their installation instructions. Let's switch back to, the, uh, to these installation instructions now. Okay, so we've just demonstrated how our gizmo here works. Uh, to unlock, turn counterclockwise to clear. The knob will spring back to the lock position. This will activate all the buttons. So when you're clearing it, basically it's resetting the wheeled gear pack, the wheeled gears with their gates to their initial in, uh, position. Enter the combination, as and you know now how it works. Turn the, knob turn the knob clockwise to unlock. To lock, sim simply rotate it back and it will mechanically move your tailpiece. Now, to change the combination, it is easy to change to a new combination using one, all five, or any number of buttons in any order. The bottom line is you just can't hit the same button more than once. Um, so you can have up to a five digit combination. Okay. Um, or you can have. You know, you can you, you just can't use the same button twice because when you push that button, it moves its wheel pack, and now you understand why. I think two or more buttons may be pushed at the same time as part of the new combination. Each button can only be pushed once in establishing the combination. Record your combination and keep it in a safe place. You will literally want to write it down um, because if you lose that combination, you got to go to that nasty second sheet, and that is not fun. Anyway. Open the lock. Use the current combination or key override. If your lock has a key override, um, you could do that. Uh, there is, I'm not familiar with a CCL key override on a cabinet door lock, but you there the, the Simplex Unican, which is unrelated to these people, but it, they have to be related because of that combination chamber. You can set the combination chamber via key as well. Um, Rotate, okay, so open the lock. Use current combination or key override. Open the lock. Rotate knob to the clear position and release. The knob will spring back to the lock position. Enter the current combination. Depress reprogram button marked red on back side of lock. Rotate knob to the clear position and release, the knob will spring back to the lock position. This clears the current combination. Press buttons firmly and deliberately in the desired order of the new combination. Um, that's really important. Put, actually push them with intent. Fully depress the buttons. You should hear an audible click when pressing the buttons. If the buttons do not click, turn the knob to the clear position, release and begin over. Rotate knob clockwise to the unlock position. The new combination has been set. If the knob does not rotate, go back to step two. Close the application and rotate knob. Close application and rotate knob counterclockwise to clear position and release the knob. Okay. And then you have some troubleshooting. So let's literally go over these steps together. Okay, let's switch to the camera view and demonstrate changing the combination and leave the installation instructions open in front of you so that we can go through it step by step together. Okay, so the first step, open the lock. Use the current combination or override. I'm going to clear it first because that's what the very first thing in the installation instruction says to do. So clear it. One, three, five, rotate it to unlock, and it unlocks. Rotate knob. Okay. Enter the combination. Okay, so I've already made a mistake. I didn't follow the instructions. It says, open the lock. One, three, five, unlock. 
rotate knob to the clear position and release. That's what we've done. Next thing, enter the current combination. One, three, five. That is the program button. You're going to put your finger on top of there and you're going to depress it. Okay. Step five, rotate knob to the clear position and release. This clears the current combination. Click, click, click. Press button step six. Press buttons firmly and deliberately in the desired order for the new combination. You should hear an audible click when pushing the buttons. If the buttons do not click, turn the knob to the clear position, release and start over. We're gonna do ours to two, four, and three. Two and four at the same time, and then three. Rotate knob to the unlock position. The new combination is set. If the knob does not rotate, go back to step two. Okay, unlock position. Now we're now we are reset. Okay. Don't do anything. It's unlocked. The next thing to do is step eight. Close the application and rotate knob counterclockwise to the clear position and release the knob. The knob will spring back to the lock position. Go all the way to clear. Okay, our program is up. This should not turn, and indeed it doesn't. It should work with two, four, and three. And it does. Clear, two, four, and three. Unlock. Clear, our old combination, one, three, five. Unlock, no good. Clear, two, four, and three. Unlock. Clear, it's good. We're locked. So, I've changed the combination of this two, two, four, and three together. I'm going to reset it back to one, three, and five because the client's going to be awfully, hey, what's going on? Uh, confused about that. So, now there's some troubleshooting down below, and let's take a closer look at the troubleshooting um, right now. So, I've reset that combination back to one, three, five, just the same way that I did it the first time. Um, now, let's look at the troubleshooting and see if I can shed any potential light on what could be happening. Knob will not turn after current combination is entered. Possible causes, combination was entered incorrectly or buttons were not depressed firmly enough, sure. Clear it, try it over. Um, otherwise, the knob was turned the wrong way. Re-enter combination and turn the knob clockwise to unlock position. Okay, so the knob will not turn after the current combination is entered. Well, it's clearly not the combination that the chamber wants. That's the bottom line. Um, don't panic just yet. After entering the current... So right now, if you've got the lock and it doesn't work, you don't have the right combination. So let's just leave it at that. If you are in the process of changing it and you have trouble just follow those installation instructions go back to step two or whatever they say in terms of that um so i th i think the reason they put it number one in the troubleshooting is the combination doesn't work sure it doesn't because you don't have the combination <laughs> um i get that kind of question all the time what's the master code to the electronic lock sold by so and so um you know, all I, all I know is what's in the installation instructions, which is, you know, published material. The step two, after entering the current combination, the reset button will not depress all the way. Absolutely. That does happen. Um, and I've done that myself. The combination was entered incorrectly or buttons were not pressed firmly enough. Turn knob counterclockwise to clear the buttons, re-enter the combination, making sure each button uh, clicks when it's pressed and that is basically a reference to step seven really if you're not getting it to work at that point go back and start over okay number three in the troubleshooting after depressing the reset button and entering the new combination the knob will not turn the knob was turned the wrong way or the buttons were not cleared before the combination was entered 
turn the knob to clear, re-enter the combination, depress the reset button, turn knob counterclockwise to clear, enter the new combination, and turn knob clockwise to unlock position. In row three, solution A is literally all of the installation instructions. So I, you know, what I do when I do these is I read the installation instructions thoroughly once or twice, and then I'll start and I will literally interpret the installation instructions literally step by step. Buttons do not click when pressed. Sure, you need to clear it. The buttons were already pressed and not cleared uh, or not pressed firmly enough. There is not an issue pressing the buttons, but you need to feel a positive click every single time. If it's not positively clicking, um, they were likely already pushed or partially pushed and you need to clear it. Turn back to clear and then start over is the bottom line. Okay. Um, now the other, um, the disaster page, let's switch back to the screen view and take a look at that. Okay, now let's take a look at the next page, which is the reset unknown combination page. Um, this is going to detail how to get the hood open on this combination chamber, so to speak. Step one with tweezers working. So what you need to do is remove the shroud. So the entire lock is going to have to, the entire combination chamber is going to have to um, be liberated, so to speak. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, this, this is not, pulling that off is going to require prying it out to the point where you may not feel comfortable doing that because this does not appear yeah I mean the the joints are staked so what they're what they're saying here you can expect this not to be simple these joints here and here they're staked meaning they've taken a slotted or a flat bladed instrument and they have placed it across here and and basically struck it with a hammer so that you create that indent in the tab at the joint so that the cover just doesn't come off okay, you'll need to convince that cover to come off uh, and come off it will but um, you'll note uh, when doing it that it's not meant to come off unintentionally. Once you have that cover off, and it's basically what you can see, now their image shows the combination chamber removed from the rest of the housing, and uh, let's let's take a closer look at that real quick. So these are those staked joints that I was talking about here and here, and, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the chamber off, or at least I think that I'm going to, because I'd like to take a closer look at the chamber alone. It appears as if but I don't need to. So I, I I'm thinking I'm gonna need to remove this screw and this screw. So let me go ahead and do that. screwdrivers I use are Weha, W-I-H-A. The reason I like them is because they will rotate in the palm of your hand without that nasty little callus that you can create there for yourself. Yeah, we're gonna need to we're gonna need to remove this screw with the washer on it first. Then we'll remove this screw. And the combination chamber should be free at that point. Which 
should come out. Yeah, appear, apparently it does. I've never done this before, so let's let's take a look. Well, doesn't want to. Um, yeah, you know what? I imagine. Yeah, there's clearly, the linkage is clearly happening. Uh, oh. Okay, not the end of the world. Those are just the cosmetic buttons. Not a problem. That is not a problem at all. Don't panic. Panic if you can't find them all. Okay, they're all here. All five are here. So what I just did was, you know, those buttons are just sitting in there because they're literally sitting on top of this combination chamber. Okay. Now, getting it, I mean, I would prefer to work because they're showing it to you taken out like this. And I am not going to pry that cover off because... It's not going to go on the way it did when it came from the factory. And I simply don't want to send the client something that I've already disassembled. Okay, just, just not going to do that. But anyway, you get a look at what the combination chamber itself is. You can buy these separately. I'm sure you can through CCO. Um, now, I've had locksmiths tell me on the Ilco, on the Simplex Unican locks, that those combination chambers break all the time. I've heard people say that. And, you know, I've, I've been exposed to those locks that have worked for years and years and years without a single failure. Um, there was a department store in Chicago that's no longer uh, in business. They were bought by Macy's called Marshall Fields. And all of the Marshall Fields locations had these locks on them. And those things were constantly getting used. And a lot of our clients, so the simplex locks... Uh, in the Marshall Fields were to back of house operations for employees to go to back of house. Shoe department, yeah, to get back to the shoes could have been a combination code. Back to the employee, you know, break area. A lot of our clients were always locksmiths and, you know, I, I, I just don't, I don't believe that they are as horrible as I have been told by some people. Um, maybe that person was, a, was an electronic combination lock salesman when you get this when you get that cover off we're going to look at step two yeah that's no problem to fix that um when you get to step two i'm actually going to put it back together now actually They are showing in step two those little E-rings that are there, and those dastardly things are easy to lose and incredibly small, and you're likely not going to have one of those laying around. We have all of our buttons. They feel pretty heavy. They might be zinc die cast. They're all placed back in there. Our thumb pieces in the unlocked position, which It seats back down just nice the way that it, it would need to go. There's no, there's no trouble with this at all. Put our screws back in. Those are, those are long screws, there's no doubt. Okay. So our next long screw will go in, and then the third screw is going to be that screw with the large washer on it.
So I've taken back to figure two. I've taken I've taken those rings off. Obviously, they're covered with lubricants and they're going to get sticky and stuck on your fingers. Just don't lose them. That's all I can tell you. I would certainly have tweezers on hand available. I would have a magnet on hand and available because both of those instruments will help you wrangle those small little pieces. For wrangling, they do sometimes need. And the purpose of that is to remove the, what they call the, apparently the unlocking slide. Okay, the unlocking slide. Now, as I put my lock back together, I realized that I did not have my thumb turn where I need it. That is not in the good position. So I'm going to, I'll pause this video, remove those scre screws, change the orientation of the thumb turn, put it back to where it should be, and then we'll continue on with this. And that uh, repositioning, that was literally just removing the combination chamber again, and then studying how the tailpiece moves. And you can see how the tailpiece that is connected to the action of the knob actually controls the retractor, okay? And getting it put back into the proper position, it was just literally uh, required a quarter, a quarter turn, um, and then making sure the tailpiece was ready to receive the spindle out of the combination chamber. And the spindle out of the combination chamber has a couple of grooves cut at the six and nine o'clock position. And you, let's just say that those are millings, and then you have the wards that are sticking on the tailpiece itself. So the wards are things that are sticking out, and the millings are sticking on the edge of the uh, on the edge of the spindle, so that the um, spindle, you know, if if my hand is a true U shaped, the spindle can go over those wards, okay, like that. I had it I, well, I had it basically turned in the opposite direction. And now I've got it set correctly where my knob is now back in the right position. Clear, one, three, five, unlock, clear, great success. Okay, now let's move on in this document that we're looking at. Now we've talked about those E-rings. Those are going to have to come off. And so they're saying in step one, with tweezers or other tools, slide the E-ring off unlocking slide stud with same tool lift the end of the unlocking slide over the unlocking slide stud note the unlocking slide will be easier to lift if pushed to the left while lifting swing unlocking slide through to clear the gears as shown yeah no doubt it's um you're gonna you're gonna it's gonna become real obvious the gate and fence analogy earlier um so depress the lockout slide in step two, which is, you know, our reprogram button, whatever they called it earlier, marked red. The gears can now rotate freely. Turn the gears so that the slots are aligned as seen in figure four. Figure four. So it appears as if figure four has all of the gates literally aligned. Yeah. Um, it does appear as if all of the gates are completely aligned so that you can easily see them. Step three, return unlocking slide over unlocking slide stud while making certain that the toes are engaged in the gear pockets. It may be necessary to adjust each gear to make proper alignment between the toes and the gear pockets. The toes are what would be called the fence. The gear pockets are what is called the gate. If you looked at locksmithing manuals, those are the actual terms. Um, it's okay, they're using toes and pockets. Makes sense. Step four. Now, so now you've got the locking slide gates, uh, f fence, and the gates aligned. Put the thing back in as shown in figure five, and then attach your e clips or e rings. 
and you should look like figure five. And figure five has the red lockout slide still depressed. The fences are in the gates. The toes are in the pockets. Reinstallation. After the back cover has been replaced, reinstall the lock to the application. So they mean application. They mean however you're using this combination chamber, that's the application. Our application happens to be a, you know, um, filing cabinet for, you know, metal filing cabinet door. Do not attempt to reset the combination until the complete unit has been reassembled. Um, yeah, don't do that because parts, for instance, that turn needs to engage the spindle coming out. If that's not fully put back together, parts are going to move. To enter a new combination, go to the operating instructions sheet under the heading to change combination and you're back at step five. In step five, is rotate the knob to the clear position and release. And at that point, you're entering your new combination. So you've got, you've got the gear packets aligned, you've got the fence, the reprogram button is still depressed. You're going to rotate it to the clear, then go to step six and enter your new combination. Utterly brilliant, the person who, who thought this up. Um, I don't know who it was. I could research that patent and probably ultimately find out the person who came up with it. It was probably based on many other patents. Um, at this point, you know, we've talked about the lock itself. We've talked about its cut sheet, the available other items. Um, let's go back to the item itself on the screen view and take a closer look. Okay, now back to the item that we're looking at. What I wanted to show you was here the link to the manufacturer's page from where you can pull up not only the CCL products that we sell, but a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to their current catalog. And that document will allow us to review um, the available items from CCL. Okay. Now, CCL stands for Corbin Cabinet Lock, and there was a time when Corbin you may know them as Corbin and Corbin Ruswin. There was a time when it was just Corbin or PF Corbin. They made cabinet locks, and at some point they sold that division off, and it became CCL, Corbin Cabinet Lock. Um, and those locks, I would bet, are definitely still out there in existence. But what we're seeing now from CCL, obviously, is a lot of padlocks. Um, and then, of course, there will be specialty locks. Very common sort of concept that you see here in real estate. Hockey puck style locks that you'll see on work vans. So the point of touring through here is that, you know, you become aware of the other material that CCL makes. Um, a variety of specialty type items, there's to be no doubt about that. Cam locks, obviously being CCL. And there is no correlation between Corbin or Corbin Ruswin and CCL at all. Com completely separate entities and have been for decades. Anyway, this catalog seems incredibly diverse, so reviewing the different items available from them is something that you can uh, certainly review. Lots of small format sorts of locks, no doubt. Let's finish up this video on camera. Now, in conclusion, the two of us, or whoever is uh, watching this uh, with you, we got to know this lock on a fairly uh, int intimate basis. Luckily, we did not have to open that cover off. I have had to do that in the past, and... Um, you know, it's never when time is on my side. It's when the client's saying, where's the tracking number? I need my locks. And here I am having to reprogram it. So nice quality lock from them. There's no question. Um, 
the I don't have a lot of experience with CCL. Um, these locks were definitely factory order. Um, they quoted three or four weeks. They did indeed take six weeks. Um, they took a little bit longer than we would have liked, I imagine. Actually, no, that's, uh, let's see here now. Yeah, that's the bottom line. They took, they took some time, so they needed to uh, get ordered. Plan ahead is what I'm saying. I'm not aware of anyone else who has a combination lock for a mechanical metal multi-cabinet, you know, possibly multi-cabinet filing, uh, you know, system that they want to lock up with a mechanical combination. They're sold as each. This client happened to buy two. If you have any questions on the D900CCL mechanical combination lock for metal drawer fronts or any other CCL products, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.